Thank you all for coming. It's nice to see so many familiar faces coming from the rural communities of Utah and Idaho. Thank you for coming down. It's good to see you. My name is Adam Henry, also a resident from a KD Family Medicine Residency Program. And I want to introduce this concept to you of treating fibromyalgia with low-dose naltrexone. I have no financial disclosures at this time. All good things must come to an end, and sure enough, residency will be too. <laughs> Bountiful Clinic is where I'm headed, my community that I grew up in. And I'm just so excited to continue on there doing outpatient medicine with Intermountain. So fibromyalgia, I'm just curious, who here has a patient that has fibromyalgia that they're treating? Pretty much most people. It's a common cause of chronic pain, and in fact, for women ages 20 to 50, it is the most common cause of widespread chronic pain. It affects about 4 million people, and women do definitely experience the brunt of the impact, although community studies are showing that men also are, are affected by this condition as well. We know from research that it does correlate with a very diminished quality of life for patients, and a number of advocacy groups have grown from patient uh, pretty much driven fully um, interest in trying to bring more light to fibromyalgia, its lack of treatments and its pathophysiology, which is uh, mutually frustrating to providers and clinicians about the difficulties in treating this condition and understanding it. For a long time and probably still to today to some extent, Fibromyalgia was a controversial diagnosis, um, but in the last 10 years, functional MRI data has helped to provide objective support in the pathophysiology. Really, fibromyalgia, as we understand it, is a problem with pain processing. And patients with fibromyalgia show a hypersensitive pain response. This little graph demonstrates areas in the brain that are correlated with perception of pain and at even minimal thresholds of pain, stimulus, patients with fibromyalgia will experience heightened pain responses that are only generated in normal subjects with high intensity pain stimuli. We know from this fMRI data too that pain processing centers are related to other centers in the brain um, that contribute to sleep, our level of wakefulness, um, as well as our uh, perception of fatigue, our emotions, and we have found that um, patients with fibromyalgia often do have associated symptoms of fatigue and sleep disturbances, psychiatric comorbidities, increased risk of suicide, and correlations with other chronic pain syndromes such as chronic migraine, IBS, and interstitial cystitis. Like all chronic pain conditions, it will take a multimodal approach to treat patients fully, but we do know in fibromyalgia that most patients will probably re require some form of pharmacotherapy to achieve a desirable quality of life. And all the information we know about fibromyalgia has culminated into only three medications being approved for treatment. These here, pregabalin, duloxetine, and milnasopram. There are some medications used off-label as well, but suffice to say there's a paucity of treatment options for these patients. So that's where the concept of naltrexone comes in. Naltrexone is a drug that we are, most of us are familiar with for the treatment of uh, opioid use disorder and alcohol use disorders. It's a full opioid antagonist, and the dosages used in those conditions are typically around 50 to 100 milligrams. But data has shown, Bent's research and translational research, that lower doses of this medication actually seem to produce a, a uh, unique effect on the order of one to five milligrams. Low-dose naltrexone, as it's termed in the literature, seems to exhibit a uh, paradoxical effect in the central nervous system, central nervous system at low dosages. It's thought that a low amount of antagonism leads to a natural upregulation of endorphins, 
and thus an analgesic response. And we also know that naltrexone also has an anti-inflammatory effect on CNS microglia, which has garnered a lot of excitement for its usefulness in chronic pain conditions. Um, there has been a large amount of evidence growing for its use in Crohn's disease and multiple sclerosis, and more recently in fibromyalgia. So I'd like to introduce the question, is low-dose naltrexone really an effective treatment for reducing the symptoms of fibromyalgia? There has been a lot of cohort studies, retrospective data supporting its use, but only until 2009 was there a randomized controlled trial to try to answer this question. Dr. Younger and his team at Stanford University published this article in the Journal of Pain Medicine, 2009. They recruited a population of women aged 20 to 50, total of 10 patients. This was a pilot study. The intervention was low-dose naltrexone for eight weeks, and the comparison was placebo crossover. In fact, it was designed in a self-controlled way where the patient acts as their own control, which helps to detect uh, significance for interventions in cohorts that in populations of small numbers, such as this one. The outcome was, the uh, primary outcome was self-reported fibromyalgia symptom severity as determined by the patient. A little bit more about the, uh, about the cohort um, recruited for this design. All patients met fibromyalgia criteria as di uh, diagnosed by ACR criteria. They uh, had rheumatological conditions excluded as well as patients taking chronic opioids. And these women were recruited from Northern California and the, old, the uh, final population consisted of 10 women aged 20 to 50. I thought this was a very nice primary outcome to measure being a patient-reported global symptom severity on a visual analog scale. With all the symptoms that occur in fibromyalgia, it can be hard to understand what is being affected by your treatment, but to make a conglomerate measure of the own patient's perception of the way the drug is affecting them, um, to measure as a single data point I thought was very nice. Their group also um, studied um, the severity of other related symptoms, such as fatigue, sleep quality, distress, um, emotional distress, that is, GI symptoms, and headaches. And they also implemented several objective pain measurement um, methods to measure um, objectively pressure, heat, and cold responses during treatment. Here's the essential design down here. At baseline, patient reported their symptoms every day for two weeks with no drug or placebo. They started the placebo without a knowledge of whether it was placebo or low-dose naltrexone. And then at two weeks, without their understand their knowledge either uh, of this, they were switched to low-dose naltrexone for eight weeks. And this was followed by a washout period of two weeks to see the duration of effect. And here you can see the primary uh, graph of the study, which shows that as the low-dose naltrexone or, uh, study period starts, that there's an ongoing and sustained response in reduction in global symptoms. Um, so the primary outcome was found in the study to be that global fibromyalgia symptoms were reduced with, with low-dose naltrexone. Side effects were reported as mild, as expected, as we know from this drug in much higher doses, 50 to 100, still mild side effects. Um, vivid dreams, as expected, which is consistent with other reports of the use of naltrexone, was reported by two participants. The study also found that there was a significant impact on people's daily reported pain scores, the highest reported pain score for that patient, the patient's uh, perception of fatigue, emotional stress, and even these, some of these objective measurements of pain um, were also significantly reduced with naltrexone, mechanical pain and thermal pain. Sleep quality, GI problems, headaches, brain fog, sadness didn't really seem to be affected, nor did cold pain thresholds. As nice as the study was, it was a bit difficult to determine 
what the effect of placebo was versus naltrexone during this transition period. You can see that during the placebo period, they did start to notice improvements in pain. Um, but because it was only two weeks long, it was hard to say how durable that effect was from placebo and how much influence low-dose naltrexone actually had. It is nice to see that the response was sustained in the low-dose naltrexone treatment um, period. But to try to address these limitations of the study, um, more randomization and longer treatment periods um, would be helpful, and sure enough, that's what his group ended up doing. So in 2013, Dr. Younger and his group again um, took on the task to study this and recruited a, a bit larger of a population, 28 patients. Um, the intervention was again low-dose naltrexone for 12 weeks. The comparison was a um, placebo, double-blinded, um, crossover again, counterbalance, which I'll show you up here in the next slide, study that allows for randomization of patients um, and a longer treatment period. And the outcome measured was daily pain severity as, as well as some other secondary measures of life satisfaction, mood, sleep quality, and fatigue. The basic study design is here. Patients had the two weeks of baseline again, were randomly assigned to start placebo or naltrexone. And then after four weeks of placebo or 12 weeks of naltrexone, they were switched to the other treatment. And then a washout period extended to four weeks this time um, was done to study the effects after discontinuation. And here are the results of that. Now, as you can see, Regardless of whether they started with placebo or low-dose naltrexone, there was a diminishment during the naltrexone phase that was significant statistically. Um, so pain, pain uh, daily pain reported by the patients was significantly reduced, um, as you can see here. And, it, and the order of effect um, didn't seem to make a difference on that significance, whether the patient received placebo first or low-dose naltrexone. Again, the side effects were uncommon. It was well tolerated. This study showed a significant impact for daily pain severity, general satisfaction with life and mood, uh, but had no significant impact on sleep quality or fatigue, which was different from the first study, especially for fatigue. Of course, there are some limitations with this data. Small sample size, 10 in the first, 28 in the next. Um, it is difficult to generalize entirely because of that small sample size as well. And we do know men are affected by fibromyalgia who weren't included in this uh, research. There still persists a confounding effect in the order of which um, intervention was um, contributing to the decreased uh, reports of pain. But um, there is future research underway in this. And there is a larger study being designed now um, to, uh, to address these limitations in a double-blind, randomized, placebo-controlled study. Hopefully soon in the next few years we'll see the results of this. So I want to make the claim that low-dose naltrexone is a low-cost, well-tolerated, and potentially efficacious intervention for treatment of fibromyalgia especially for pain. It's a novel modality in treating pain that other methods of treating fibromyalgia do not implement. And it may have some effect on the other related symptoms in fibromyalgia aside from pain. No drug is a panacea, as we know. And all chronic pain conditions, including fibromyalgia, are going to need a multimodal approach. I felt like that fit well with the theme of this conference. Healthy lifestyle sleep, hygiene, diet, exercise, stress reduction, and education about the condition, in addition to medications, are going to be the best bet in having success in treating this condition. Just want to thank Clark Madsen, my mentor, for this project, helping me organize the data and presentation, and Dr. Jeremiah West, a chronic pain provider here, um, serving the Weber and Davis counties providing chronic pain management who introduced me to this idea of low-dose naltrexone. And there are my references.
Thank you so much.